Could you sing of God's love forever? Is it that good? Is it that real? Amen. I'm going to ask you to open your book to Psalms, because that's basically where we're going to live for the next few moments. And it'll be easier to turn from verse to verse. Some of them, you don't have to turn. You can just listen. We are in the book of Psalms. My message this morning is let's practice thanks living. Go beyond thanksgiving. Let's do thanks living. Turn with me, first of all, to Psalm 7, verse 17. Lord God, we are a thankful people because you are a good and faithful and loving Father. Thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of challenges and unknowns as we've been living this year, that, God, we know you are there, you are sure, you are the solid rock on which we stand, on which we build our lives. And Lord, today we exalt you as the rock of our salvation. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 7, 17 says, I will. Say, I will. I will will give thanks. Say it. Okay, I'm not convinced. Come on, shout it. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Isn't it interesting? Whenever we feel intense emotion, whether it's joy or love or sorrow, God has wired us somehow that we need to sing. Are any of you country music lovers? Come on, you can confess. Okay, there you go, Jack. Okay. Yeah, my husband tunes to it sometimes too. It's like, oh my. Oops, I gave myself away. But every country song has a good story, right? Well, I mean, might not be good story, but it tells a story well. I will sing. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 86, 12. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. That's a big commitment. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I'm not going to be fake. And it's another, I will. It's a commitment. Psalm 9, verse 1. I will. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. This goes another step beyond. I will bless you, I will sing, I will glorify you, and I will tell. What if all of us today, or this week, before we dive into our turkey, if we go around the table and we all tell how God's been good to us in spite of COVID, some of us through COVID, I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Please turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, also beginning with verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Did you know that sometimes we have to tell ourselves to praise the Lord? Because sometimes we just don't feel like it. But you know, when we don't feel like it, that's probably the time we most need to do it. It's most important to do it because it defeats the devil. He won't stick around if we're praising the Lord. He leaves. So when we least feel like it, that's the time we need to do it because we need to drive back the enemy and we need to lift up our spirits. The Holy Spirit will do that as we praise him, as we thank him. 
There's a lot going on. It's more than just words coming out of our mouths. It's spiritual warfare. It is spiritual growth. Psalm 103, verse 1, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Now, the times that we probably most often and most see people doing something with all their inmost being is when they're cheering for their favorite football team on Thanksgiving Day. But you know what? We should be best known. We as believers should be best known for praising the Lord with everything that is within us, with all my inmost being. Because God deserves nothing less. Verse 2, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. What's another word for benefits? Starts with B also. Blessings, forget not. In other words, turn it, remember his blessings. Remember his blessings. That's one of the first things the devil wants us to forget is that God has blessed us in the past, that God is able to do it again. And if he did it for somebody else, he can do it for us. Forget not. All his benefits. What would happen if we started a journal, which can be a 50 cent black and white kids notebook for school. We started a journal and every day we wrote down three of God's blessings. And you can't repeat them tomorrow. How many pages would you fill before you exhausted all that God has done for us personally, for us as a state, for us as a nation, for the world? Hey, let's think universal. Who keeps those planets spinning and those stars shining? Are we excited yet? Yes. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Saints, aren't you glad God doesn't keep grudges? Do you know somebody that holds grudges? Don't shout out any names or anything, okay? You know somebody that holds grudges? Is it fun to be with them? Not so much. He forgives all our sins. He chooses to. He can remember anything he wants to. He's God. He chooses. What does Psalms tell us elsewhere he does? He buries them in the sea of his forgetfulness. Did you know God has a sea called forgetfulness? And that's where all our sins go. Next time you confess a sin, picture that in your mind. Picture in your mind that God is casting that sin into the sea of his forgetfulness. And he will never remember it again. If it ever comes up again, it's because we remind him. If he forgets about it, why should we bring it up? That's the enemy. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He forgives us. He heals us. Who redeems your life from the pit. What's it mean to redeem? It means to buy back. He rescues us. He redeems our life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Close your eyes and picture yourself sitting there wearing a crown of love and compassion that God himself has given you. He forgives, he heals, he redeems, he crowns, who satisfies your desires with good things. Has God been good to you? who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. 
What does the satisfaction of our desires have to do with youth being renewed? God carries our burdens. God forgives our sins. He heals our diseases. He satisfies our desires because when our hearts line up with his will, he can give us what our heart desires because our heart desires what he desires. And just that satisfaction, that fulfillment, renews our youth and strengthens us like the eagle in flight. It's pretty amazing what God does for his people. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Praise the Lord, verse 22. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Jesus said, if we won't praise him, the dirty, ugly rocks will. Do you want a dirty, ugly rock to outpraise you? I don't think so. Turn to Psalm 106, verse 1. I love it. The first three words form a sentence. Say it out loud together. Praise the Lord. Give Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 105, verse 1. Psalm 105, verse 1. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. May Thanksgiving Day be more about more than just turkey and cranberries, okay? Let's make sure. Turn to Psalm 117, verse 1. 117, verse 1. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Turn to Psalm 95, verse 1. You can see that there's no shortage in Scripture of opportunities and help in praising and thanking the Lord. Psalm 95, verse 1, come. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Verse 6, come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Church, aren't you glad there's somebody who's caring for you? Who knows everything you're feeling, everything you're going through, everything you're going to think before you think it. He knows us. And he cares for us. We have a lot to be thankful for. We're not done. Psalm 89. Please turn. Psalm 89, first verse 8. Psalm 89, verse 8. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. 
verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. That's what God builds his kingdom upon, okay? Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. His righteousness, his justice are the foundation for his love and his faithfulness. Verse 15, blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness. I want us this year for Thanksgiving, not just to be a moment in time, but I want it to be a verb. What's a verb? An action word. We've read several verses containing many outright commands, not suggestions. These are commands to do something. It's not enough to just think nice thoughts about God, who he is and what he's done, but we must give him thanks and praise. The word is not thanks thinking, but it's thanksgiving. In these Psalms that we read, first of all, there were signs of personal action. I will give, I will sing, I will praise, I will glorify, I will tell, I will give testimony to how good and faithful and loving God is. How many people in your world where you live every day know that you are thankful to God? The only way they're going to know is if you live thanksgiving. But you can emphasize another word and it changes the meaning a little bit. I will. It's an act of my will. It's a decision. It's a choice. I will give. I will sing. I will praise. I will glorify. I will tell. I will tell. I will tell. Then there are commands of encouragement. Praise the Lord. Any English teacher will tell you that in that kind of sentence, the first word actually is you praise the Lord. You extol him. I looked up the word extol. You know what it means? Praise enthusiastically. Don't be a boring praiser. Praise enthusiastically. You extol the Lord. You give praise. You give thanks. You come. Come sing. Come shout. Come bow down and worship. Let's go a step farther. Praise, um, thanks thinking, thanks giving, thanks living. This speaks to thankfulness moving from a thought. Oh, God is good. We think about it. We turn it into thanksgiving, an expression. God, you are good. Thank you. Thanks living becomes a way of life, a behavior, a habit, automatic. I remember your brother saying that all the time, Kat. <laughs> it's a choice. It's an attitude. Automatic. Thanks living can change our thinking from selfish to others oriented, from negative to positive, from carnal to spiritual. It can heal our relationships. It shows love, caring, and positive regard. It can change our attitude from disappointment 
to gratitude. And the word of God tells us to praise the Lord for all things, in all things. We don't necessarily thank God for COVID-19, but we can certainly thank God through COVID. Because he's still God. Look at the back of your bulletin. I know you can read, but you might not. The back of the bulletin says this, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Franklin Delano Roosevelt wrote that. In happy moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, worship God. In painful moments, trust God. Every moment, thank God. Colossians 3.17, And whatsoever you do, that encompasses everything. Whatsoever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. How many of you wash dishes, thankfully? Good. Because you know what? That dish had food on it at one time. (laughs) How many of you thankfully wash your car? In all things. We would worry less if we praised more. I could have said that when I sat down here and closed the Bible and we could have gone home. That's a sermon. We would worry less if we praised more. Thanksgiving is, I love this. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. Sit down around your Thanksgiving table this Thursday and try to be dissatisfied. Right? You know what? You and I can live that kind of life, think those kinds of thoughts, whether there's a turkey in front of us or not. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. Yes, give thanks for all things, for as it has been well said, our disappointments are but his appointments. A state of mind that sees God in everything is evidence of growth in grace and a thankful heart. I love this one. God gave you a gift of 86,400 seconds today. Have you used one to say thank you? Hang that on your mirror and look at it every morning. (laughs) Because we cannot see just what God is saving us from, we vent our foolish reproaches. If we could see this, we would often kneel down and thank God for certain trials as the richest of his mercies. Thank you for giving me the strength to overcome adversity, to do what's right for the benefit of the greater good, and to rise above negativity. That's a word for COVID-19. I don't know who wrote it. But that's something we can put on and wear during COVID-19. Let's look back at Psalm 89, verses 15 and 16. It says, blessed. What does that word really mean? I've said it umpteen times. Blessed. I heard it to my left. Truly happy, truly happy are those who have learned. In other words, it doesn't come naturally. We have to learn it. Truly happy are those who have learned to acclaim you. What does acclaim mean? 
praise enthusiastically, just like extol, praise enthusiastically and publicly proclaim, acclaim. To praise the Lord enthusiastically and publicly. Truly happy are those who have learned to enthusiastically praise and publicly praise you. Who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. 1 John 1, 5 says this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Think back to the Old Testament. What kept Joseph positive, hopeful, and believing all those years that he was unfairly treated by people such as his brothers, by government, by fellow prisoners who forgot about him once they got out? What kept Joseph positive, hopeful, and believing in God. It was the fact that he lived his life in the light of God's presence. He never forgot that God was with him, that God was caring for him, that God was up to something good. He lived his life in the light of God's presence. Thankfulness and thanksgiving will keep us consistently aware that we are living in the light of God's presence as we live through things even like COVID-19. We live our lives in the light of God's presence. Going on, verse 16 says, they rejoice. Do you know what the word rejoice means in Hebrew? To spin around wildly. You ever been so happy that you just spun around? Deal with the dizziness later. Rejoice means to spin around wildly. They rejoice in your name all day long. Not just when we feel like it. All day long. They celebrate. You know what celebrate means. Let's have a party. They celebrate your righteousness. I have nowhere else seen those two words in the same, or two phrases in the same sentence. Celebrate your righteousness. What is righteousness? It means the quality of being morally right or justifiable. We celebrate, church, because we have a holy God, someone totally other from us in his nature to worship and dedicate our lives to and live our lives for because he is upright, righteous. He has made it possible for us to be made righteous in Christ. We have a lot to celebrate, much of which cannot be seen by the physical eye. It's spiritual. But because it's unseen, it means we may live victoriously even though we're living in a time such as this. Church, let's rejoice. Let's celebrate God. Let's acclaim him enthusiastically and publicly. Let's live our lives in the light of his presence with hearts full of thanksgiving. Let's give thanks. Let's practice thanks living.